Mind controlled villains are not real villains. Oh, I admit, I'm not certain if this is a blessing or a curse. Something deep inside is urging me to act. Anime has certainly come a long way. The medium has conjured up some of the most compelling villains of all time. The problem is that we've also gotten a considerable amount of highly praised villains that were honestly just too complicated for their own good. He made my dream feel possible. Criminals like you who chase petty dreams, they must all be purged. There's no such thing as a true hero in this society. Hero is the title for those who've accomplished great deeds. You frauds must be killed. What meaning is there to killing if you don't have real convictions? I am the one who will carry out Zane's will! Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. Let's be real for a second, what's the point of writing a complex villain into your universe that's intended to force viewers to question the actions of a protagonist if it doesn't actually lead to anything meaningful? I know a lot of people have been caught off guard by the fact that our boy Izuku Midoriya, also known as the sixth quirked hero Deku, plans to find a way to save his arch enemy without taking his life. An intriguing conundrum to be sure, but far from being an original one. Even though they might not seem like it at first glance, Tomorrow Shigaraki from my Hero Academia and Nagato, also known as Pain from Naruto Shippuden, are both incredibly similar characters. They were both victims of war who were conceived by their respective authors to raise awareness of the true nature and devastation that comes out of world wars. While Nagato and Shigaraki would both follow similar paths throughout their individual journeys, there are a couple of key differences that makes me believe that unlike Nagato who went down as being one of the greatest anime villains of all time, Shigaraki is inevitably going to completely fail as a villain in the long run and could even potentially ruin My Hero Academia on a whole in the process. Then we'll be neither all for one nor Tomura Shigaraki. The boundary between us grows ever more undefined. That's the problem. It's been well documented that Nagato himself originated from Masashi Kishimoto's desire to elaborate on the very real tragedies of war. Following the unforgiving events of Naruto Part 1, Kishimoto felt the need to create a story arc that would heavily emphasize the true destruction that is birthed out of war before the series marched towards its ruthless final arc. The real Nagato never fights in his invasion of Konoha himself during Naruto Shippuden. He instead decided to harness a group of corpses called the Six Paths of Pain to wreak havoc on the world in the name of peace. Nagato on the surface was the sole leader of the Akatsuki, a man who believed that pain and suffering are inherent aspects of human existence and that they were the only things that have the potential to unlock growth and understanding within the species. Pain's fascinating philosophy was rooted in his traumatic childhood and his experiences with loss and suffering. He hoped that by achieving his ultimate goal, which was to inflict enough pain and suffering on the world, that humanity would empathize with each other's pain, leading to a long-lasting era of peace. Nagato's philosophy would ultimately be challenged by Naruto's unwavering belief that true understanding and connection could be achieved through compassion and forgiveness rather than through inflicting pain. This infamous clashing of ideals between protagonist and antagonist would lead to Nagato changing his mind. The insane truth is that the vast majority of us saw Pain's philosophy and reasoning behind everything that he did as being extraordinarily compelling, despite the fact that it could honestly be argued that his entire mission was destined to fail from the very beginning. Inflicting the same type of trauma on everyone on the planet in itself wouldn't ever lead to understanding, because sharing trauma doesn't guarantee that all of the victims of that trauma will have the exact same perception. People deal with trauma differently. Now, to his credit, Nagato does somewhat address this glaring flaw by mentioning that some people would seek revenge in the name of justice for all of the lives that he's taken, before pondering the question himself, asking what is justice, and then declaring his path as being true justice. Pain's dialogue and inspiring conviction in Naruto Shippuden made us look at both the hero's and villain's actions and compare the two, but it was clear that Nagato's philosophy was always broken at its core, and it was crucial that the show made him acknowledge that fact before he faced his own justice. 
this. Tomoro Shigaraki has become one of my favorite anime villains of all time. But unlike Pain, he does annoyingly lean more on the line of being an antagonist instead of a fully blown villain, despite everything that he's done. That's because fans could make the very grounded argument that Shigaraki has been manipulated by All for One ever since he was a little boy, both figuratively and literally. It's important to remember that when Shigaraki had full control over his body, he stated that not only does he view himself as a villain who fights in the name of evil, but he hopes to go beyond that and straight up give the villains a hero of their own. Tomoro Shigaraki has been manipulated, sure. I'd even agree that he's one of the most broken characters that I've seen in anime. The guy literally took out his entire family in a single night because of a sudden awakening of his destructive quirk. And if we're being honest, the fact that his family wasn't exactly giving him the five star treatment to begin with made the whole situation a lot more complicated. But we know that Shigaraki has grown to genuinely enjoy destroying buildings, hurting people, and more than anything else, spreading chaos across the globe. My Hero Academia as a series hasn't let me down yet in terms of the writing of its villains. Sure, some villains were better written than others, but I feel like all of them, in one way or the other, got exactly what was coming to them. That leaves us with the payoff of payoffs, the highly anticipated resolution to All for One and Shigaraki's story arcs. If I implied that I wasn't extremely worried for what's coming, then I'd be lying to myself and to you guys. Horikoshi has already laid the groundwork for Shigaraki to be saved by our boy Deku. It's it's not a matter of will Shigaraki be saved, it's a matter of how and when. Shigaraki was always meant to parallel Deku. Both of his characters had the goal of becoming great heroes one day while they were still children. But because of Shigaraki's circumstances, he would of course become a villain instead. Deku hasn't really been built up to be an ideological character who goes around changing the minds of his foes, but it does seem like the anime has been building up to Shigaraki being the first villain that Deku will truly save. Now, it's already been established that even without All for One's grasp over Shigaraki's mind, he still enjoys being a villain, and I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but it's been heavily implied that our boy Deku is against the prospect of taking lives. I've voiced my opinion on the fact that I believe that superheroes should be allowed to put down their most heinous criminals whenever it's appropriate. But honestly, I don't feel the same way about Deku for several reasons. It makes sense in universe that Deku would cling onto the hope that everyone has the potential of getting reformed. He's a hopeful character and despite the fact that there was a massive prison break at Tartarus, he still hasn't been given a reason to believe that all of the villains in his universe couldn't be peacefully contained. This isn't another situation that's as ridiculous as Gotham's where the guards practically hand out spec keys to all of the villains that they lock up. Even the most powerful villain in My Hero Academia being All for One has been proven to be able to be contained. When we think about redemption, we usually think about characters switching sides, but redemption can also be interpreted as the moment that a character realizes that they want to change. I'm going to hope that this is the kind of redemption that Shigaraki will achieve before he gets everything that he undoubtedly deserves. In that sense, I do believe that Deku will be able to save him. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and please consider subscribing. You're also going to love this next video where we discuss how Chainsaw Man succeeded where Kaiju number 8 failed. Thanks for watching, take care.